And I want to say thank you to everyone for being here tonight. I, I really do appreciate everyone coming out. And I don't want to waste your time. I, I want to give you some really good quality content here and, and things that helped me as a trader. So I want to talk about the trader's edge. And I get, I get this question a lot. Well, what do you mean when you say a trader's edge? And you know that the actually the the formation of this class kind of happened if um, some of you guys know this some of you don't I actually do wood carving and I was working on a wood carving and um, I got to thinking about how important it is for me to have a, an extremely sharp tool when I'm working. If anyone is, you know, Bob C here or, or something like that would tell you he's in he's in the trades. Um, a sharp tool, a sharp knife is safer than a dull knife. And as I'm as I'm cutting along there, I you know, one of the skills that you have to have to to carve wood is you have to have the ability to maintain an edge not only create an edge but maintain an edge and that's really what brought this um, brought this around um, if you take a look at um, at this graphic you know I could put all kinds of circles on here all kinds of uh, chalk marks on here and what we're trying to do is define an edge now when we're working to define an edge, we try to take the universe of all the things we kind of have to think about in the market. And we're, we're essentially drilling down to a smaller and smaller space. So as you can see right here, what we're trying to do is just simply encompass this little area here that's our edge. Okay, it's our edge in the market as retail traders is typically quite small. OK, so we have to work really hard not only to develop that edge, but then hold on to that edge strongly, never letting that edge go, because as soon as we do, we end up giving back to the market. So we need to work on that edge. Now, I'm going to show you some of the things that I do and um, not that what I do is the only style to trade it's it's obviously not there's thousands of ways to profit in the market okay and in each and every one of those you have to determine your edge and de developing your edge is a very personal thing Okay, because we're all different as traders. We all have different issues and hang-ups about money and, and skill level and those kind of things that we have to work through. So we're all a little different. But some of the things I wanted to put in, in this is that as you're working to develop that edge is, is the style of trading, your risk, your tools, your rules. And what we want to do is we want to block out all of the noise that's out there there's so much noise and there's so many distractions when we're trying to trade that we're often our own worst enemy when it comes to being successful in this business okay so let's take a look here and we're just going to move through this and i've got several slides and then we'll um, jump into some some charts so one of the first things to think about when you when you think about trading is that trading is a zero sum game. What that means is there's one winner and one loser. The only way we can be winners is we have to take the money away from somebody else. Institutions are working to take the money away from us. Okay. High frequency trading firms are working to take the money away from us. Dark pools are working to take money away from us. And they have some of the best edge in the market. A dark pool doesn't even have to disclose what it's doing throughout the day. They consolidate all of their volume to the market at the end of the day. We don't even get to see it. They have a tremendous advantage. Institutions have a massive advantage and they spend millions and millions of dollars every year making sure that they maintain that advantage. 
Okay, so when you think about that zero sum game, that means that we have to really be at our best. We have to always be working to improve and be at our best when we approach the market. We cannot come to the market in a haphazard way. We cannot expect to win if we're not prepared. Okay, so you want to consider that. Now, another big part of this that I want you to take away from this is that we need to look at a chart with a little bit different eye, right? Not just on how we're going to make money, but how other folks might be trading in that chart and how we can capitalize on their mistakes. Okay, so we have to look at that chart with that really critical eye. And that's really our big advantage in trading. We, our biggest advantage as retail traders is being able to watch, being able to read, and being able to focus on price action. And we'll talk about that as we go along here. So zero sum game. So here's one of the first things that I find that trips up most traders is they don't know what kind of a trader they are. How many of you would admit that you've spent years kind of just jumping around? Well, I'd sure like to be a day trader and well, swing trading works pretty good. And, well, I wouldn't mind holding some longer term positions and and we end up jumping around so much we never settle in on one thing. You know, there's that old saying out there, the jack of all trades and the master of none. And one of the biggest problems that traders have when I'm working with them is that they're jumping all over the place. They never settle down. See, there's tons and tons of ways to make money in the market. But if you never settle down to one, if you never focus in on one, then you're always going to be struggling as a trader. Our great advantage that we have is being able to focus and study price action in a chart. Okay? And if we can't figure out what our style is as a trader, we're probably doomed from the beginning. So we have to fix that. We have to figure out what are we going to do. Now, what I'm going to say is I'm going to tell you pick one and then work to master one before you ever think about adding another strategy. Pick one and work to master it because you'll learn so much about yourself working to master that one strategy. It's just kind of like... Um, well, let's go to the, you know, the trades. All right. It, it, when, when I was growing up, my, my granddad, my, um, my grandpa, I call him grandpa. Um, he was a carpenter and he was the old style carpenter. He was the guy who went in from digging the hole to putting in the concrete, laying block if it needed to be done, laying brick if it needed to be done, framing, putting it all together, doing all the electrical work, doing all the plumbing work, doing all the roofing and the siding and the concrete. He was the old style carpenter that did it all. Now, consequently, when you do something like that, you never really get really, really good at everything. Okay. Nowadays, as you know, everyone is specialized. They specialize in a particular area. Traders need to do the same thing. We need to specialize in, in a specific area and get really, really good at that one thing. Before we try to add something else, if we continue to jump around and we never, ever settle in, to a strategy um, or a style, we're going to be always floundering in the market. Think about it. 
we have a very tiny edge that we can maintain in the market or develop in the market. We cannot spread that out over a whole bunch of areas because we'll lose that edge, okay? So developing your edge. First thing, you know, uh, I'm not gonna read all this stuff to you guys. Um, you've gotta be ready to trade. So f I'm, I'm gonna say a couple things here, you know, on education. One of the things that helps you develop an edge is learning to read your charts. Learning a few trade patterns and a few candle patterns. You don't have to know them all. You have to be really good at just a few of them. I like to tell people and I show people all the time, I've built a career out of basically two patterns. And that's no joke, guys. I trade about two patterns in the market and that's all I trade. And that's all I need to trade. And I'm never without a trade if I want to trade. I don't have to be good at everything. I have to be really good at a couple things. Okay, so you need that education. You need to take that time and realize that um, getting, getting your education in, in trading is like, you know, it's a long-term thing. It's, it's like getting your PhD. You're never really finished learning. You know how a doctor calls his clinic a practice and a, an attorney calls his, his business a practice. A trading business is a practice. You're continuing to practice on and on and on, always working to improve every single day, working to improve and define your edge in the market. Now, here's one thing that messes up a lot of people, and I run into this all the time as I'm coaching folks. If you've been consistently losing as a trader, and you have not fessed up to that, you're just going to continue to lose money. I know that's harsh to say. No one wants to have to fess up to losing a bundle of money. But if you hide that from your, from your spouse, you hide that from somebody, you don't fess up to that problem. You're never going to fix it. You have to face that, you know, guy in the mirror woman in the mirror, you have to face that person and fess up to the fact that you've messed this up. See, if your account is approving in, I mean, proving to you that what you're doing is not working, then why are you continuing to work to do it? Why aren't you stopping and getting some help? One of my friends, um, I don't know if he's here tonight, uh, Mike Peterson, commonly says, you know, it, it, it always made him laugh how he would go to the golf course and guys would show up with $2,500 sets of clubs but wouldn't spend $100 to learn how to use them. You have to invest in your education. And believe me, Investing in your education works. I did it for years with a mentor. And that Mike Peterson, Mike P is here. Um, he has done it through me. He has hired me for basically two years. Once a month. And consequently, his first year as a trader, he made a 65% return. And right now, He's pulling out of the market consistently somewhere between about three and four thousand dollars a month. Because he's invested in his education. So consider that. Uh, your trading plan. You need to know your goals, your risk tolerance, your management plan, your rules of engagement. That's all part of your education, putting that together. Um, if you don't have that, you need to stop trading until you get it, okay? You cannot develop an edge unless you have a good solid process there. Okay, self-evaluation. We all need to do a self-evaluation. That's always hard to do, but it's really important for us to do. If we do that quick self-evaluation every single day when we approach the market, 
Okay. We've got to figure out, are we prepared? Did we get sleep last night? Did we have a fight with our spouse? Is something really creating some emotion? Are we unfocused? Sick? Something that's going to cause us to make really massive mistakes in the market. We have to do better. We have to protect every single day, every decision we make as a trader. Luckily, we don't have to stay focused that long for what we do. Unless you're a day trader, and then it's just constant focus. As swing traders, position traders, you don't have to stay focused all that long, but you do have to have some dedicated focus time to your trading where you're really honed in on what has to be done. Okay, you do a market evaluation. Now, a lot of folks know here that every day I put out a a market uh, a video. It's it's I call it the market prep video, and it's free to everyone. Uh, it's posted on YouTube, and um, if you guys um, are not subscribed on YouTube, please you know here take this link. Run over there, subscribe, and click the little bell so you can be notified because every morning I put a video out there. Plus, there's a ton of other training on that on that site. There's no charge for anything. It's always free. Okay? And it's going to stay that way. All right? I'm, my goal here is to help as many traders as I can improve their trading. And that's really what Rick's goal is and what Ed's goal is, what Steve's goal is. You know, uh, part of our group, we're all working really, really hard to try and improve other people's trading lives. So do that market evaluation, watch that video, or learn to do it yourself where you're looking at that market and taking that objective look. You know, I've been saying a lot lately during, during the, our live two-hour class every day, is look at a chart for what it is, not for what you want it to be. If you can't set your uh, bias aside, you're going to always have trouble maintaining an edge. Okay. And then business management, keeping records, consistent performance evaluation is extremely important. And this last one I think is huge because everyone wants to, wants the easy button, right? We want to be in a trade service that just, you know, sends us out the three trades this week that's going to make us a killing and we don't have to think about it. Is there anyone here that's ever been in a service that, that worked that way? The answer is no, because if you don't understand the trade, if you don't understand why they called that trade, what the purpose of that trade is, you're never going to be successful at that trade, with that trade. So never copy. And what I mean by never copy is take a look at the chart, evaluate it yourself, make that decision and make that trade your own. You make that trade your own without blindly following, you're going to do better. I promise you, you'll do better than trying to copy someone else that has completely different goals, completely different rules, completely different, different experience levels. So make that evaluation and learn from the process. Okay, I'm going to speed up here. Work to master. You know, we all know there's, there's about a gazillion different chart patterns out there in the market. There's tons and tons of candlestick patterns. And there's folks out there that waste way too much time trying to learn every single little detail about every single little pattern. And the truth of the matter is, it's okay to learn them, but focus on one at a time. Try to work to master one or two price patterns, one or two candle patterns, and then add to it after you've got that down and you understand it, okay? Like I said earlier, I basically trade two patterns in the market. And both of them are very simple. It's one of the most commonly repeatable pattern in the market. It's easy to identify. And I'll show it to you when we look at charts, okay? 
So one of the things that you have to do if you want to develop an edge as a trader, you have to have a plan. And one of the things that I think is extremely important to that plan is you have to have a goal. If you're starting at point A and you're trying to get to point B, how do you know you're going to get there if you don't have a plan? You need to have a plan. I said earlier that I made my goal. I thought this was a good month or an okay month, not a good, good, good month, because I really didn't add much onto my goal, but I made my goal for this month. That's success to me because I am achieving what I set out to do. Okay? And I do the same thing over and over and over. So when you set a goal, make it realistic and achievable. I ask a lot of people as um, that I'm working with or coaching, they'll, uh, I'll say, well, what's your goal? And they'll say, well, to make money. That's not a goal. That's a wish. It's a desire. It may even be a fantasy. But it's not a goal. And so real quick and dirty here. Let's say you have a $100,000 account doesn't matter what size of account you have the same math will work here and you want to make 18% a year that's $18,000 that you want to make at the end of the, the month now if you think about $18,000 you I mean at the end of the year that's a big chunk to try and swallow right but let's break it down that's 1500 a month 375 a week if we made an average of 12 trades, it only requires a $125 win per trade. Now, that would be assuming that you win every single trade. We know that's not going to happen, right? So what if we looked at this with a risk, um, 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 a risk, re I mean, a win-loss ratio? Let's say we win about six out of every 10 trades. And we have a risk tolerance of only 100 bucks. Per trade all right well every time we plan a trade we should look for trades and only trade trades that give us the potential of, of at least two times our risk why would we want to risk our capital risk one to, to make one on a stock trade that doesn't make sense We want to have a better risk reward setup in the trade. Now I say, notice right here, the potential. We never know, a, you know on any trade if it's actually going to achieve its potential. But if we don't plan a trade that has potential, what are we doing? We're wasting our time, right? If it doesn't have the potential of making us twice the risk, twice what we risk, move on, find another trade. But often this is a big failure point for a lot of traders because they never even look. They don't take the time to plan. They have no idea what the potential of that trade is. So our goal was $1,500 a month. So let's put some realism in here. We're planning trades with two times we're, where we can uh, gain twice what we're risking. So that's going to require us to make 12 winning trades over the course of a month, 2400 bucks, and eight losing trades. We lose 800 and we make our goal. Okay, there's always going to be losses in your trading. Now, what if you have those trades? Can you find trades that have you, give you the potential of three times your risk or more? Yes, they're out there you have to work pretty hard to find them, okay? But they're out there. And we have to do that job of a trader, of doing that, doing that um, simple planning to improve our odds and, and sharpen that edge as a trader, okay? Analysis paralysis. I run into this all the time when I'm coaching folks is We've jumped around so much for so many different places, and this is how it happens, right? You read a book, you go to a class, you come to the market, and you're really, really confident that this is going to work. Man, I know these, this candle pattern. I see this candle, candle pattern. I'm going to make some money. And then the market hands you your head. OK, 
Okay. So the next thing that hits you is you say, well, obviously, I need some more education. I need to find something else. And that's when you jump over here and you pick up that and you pick up this. And pretty soon you've added so much junk to your chart that you're frozen in trading. You can't do it. Now, I want you guys to know that these are two tra charts that I used to use. I can also tell you that with these two charts, I never made consistent money, ever. I had periods of success and then nasty periods of losses. I yo-yoed that account for years. Never achieving any kind of consistency. I was always distracted by that new shiny object, right? Like the dog and the squirrel. Squirrel, and you can't get, get that dog's attention. That new shiny thing comes along. You hear about something new and shiny, and all of a sudden, you're, you're going down that, that, that hole, trying to change up everything, jumping around again, and you're creating your own problem. You're making it worse. Okay? So what we need to do is work on keeping it simple. You know, one of the things that is a common theme when I go to these trade shows and things like that, you you listen to the traders that are giving the com, uh, the speeches, the conversations and stuff like that. They repeatedly say, keep it simple. And if you look at their charts, their charts are very simple. Now, these are the charts I use today. Everyone knows that I call it a naked chart. This one right here where I just mark up the price action of the chart. I don't really need an indicator. I follow trends. I learned something, the, the big aha moment for me years and years ago when I was about ready to quit trading, when I, I had just stunk up the place forever. That big aha moment for me happened when I realized that all I really needed to do is find a trending chart. A chart that's proving it wants to go in a direction and then be patient enough to wait for the next entry. And that, folks, changed my trading life. I didn't need any fancy indicators. In fact, the fewer indicators I had on my charts, the more my profits improved. I didn't have to be nervous, anxious, or rushing to the trade because I can actually see the setups coming way ahead of time and prepare for them. And anyone from right way options hit run candlesticks can tell you I do this every day. This is what we talk about every day. Just following a simple chart, taking the easy money out of the market and doing it over and over and over. Okay, so work to keep it simple. Keep your trading simple and you will see an improvement in your trading. These guys out there on the internet that, that run around with their chest all pumped out, hyping up all of this junk, well, I'm telling you guys it's junk, okay? So much of it is just plain garbage. If it was that easy to make money in the market, everyone would be doing it, and then there wouldn't be any money to be made. Okay? Every day you should be thankful that there's people out there continuously providing liquidity to the market because they don't know what they're doing. That's the only way we can make money. Okay, so become a student of price. I talk about price action all the time. You'll see it in my videos all over the um, all over YouTube um, and, and the website. And I talk about how price is king. If you can learn to read price action, it will lead you right where you want to go. And that's more money in your account consistently. Okay. 
Now, once you've had developed that edge, you have to work to maintain that edge. And this is something that's really hard. You need a set of rules, a set of guidelines. Here's a few set, a few rules that, that I use, that I trade by. And just as an example to maybe get you started. But maintaining your edge is all about discipline. And then just that relentless and ruthless pursuit to be consistent. You see, I don't, I am not impressed at all by someone that is swinging for the fence on every trade because I know their consistency sucks. They're yo-yoing their account up and down all the time because they make that big win and they pop around and they act, act like they're the best thing going because they had this great big win, but they never tell you about the great big losses that they took trying to hit that big one. Okay. So think about that for just a little bit. It's about the discipline and the consistency that's important in your trading. And I, I love this quote here. I believe in, in discipline. You can forgive incompetence. You can forgive lack of ability. But you cannot forgive the lack of discipline. If we are going to have an edge in the market, we have to be disciplined to our plan and a set of rules. And if you don't work every single day to maintain that, guess what's going to happen? The market will start to take that money back from you. Your labor, once you just relax for a little bit, well, I'm going to wing it on this one. And it costs you a bucket of money. All right. You must maintain your discipline at all times. When you approach the market, be focused and be ready to trade. Okay. Without emotion. Now, the next thing I think is really important is building yourself a good qualified watch list. One of the things that I, I see all the time is, is, People are jumping all over the place, chasing around the flavor of the day. Something was in the news. Oh, they talked about it on CNBC or, you know, big whoop. They're chasing stocks. What I do is I run scans. I build a quality watch list of stocks that fit me. I'm not going to waste the time to look at a stock that doesn't fit me for price, for my account size. And I'm not going to waste my time that doesn't fit me for volume or the patterns that I'm looking for. Okay? I'm not going to waste my time with those stocks. I don't have any time for those. My job is to be focused in on my pattern and nothing else. So I work from a watch list of prepared stocks. And what I mean by prepared is I look at that watch list, I draw up that watch list, and I'm waiting for the next trade. If it fails, I kick it out of the watch list. I'm only interested in, my, in the stocks that fit me personally and move me forward. Okay, because isn't that what we're supposed to be doing is, is just progressively moving our account forward? I have no time for stocks that aren't going to do that, that don't fit me. So make sure as soon as you can, when you can incorporate a watch list and working from that watch list, it prevents you from hopping all over the pet place, trading unprepared or trading emotional. In those trades. Peace. There we go. Sorry, I was flipping it all over the place there for a second. Um, <clears throat> Rick says this all the time, and I repeat it all the time. Trading is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Successful trading honestly has nothing to do with being right. Everyone wants to put on a trade and just be right. Show me the trade that's going to make me money today. I want to be right on the trade. Okay, but that rarely works, right? 
being trying to be right in the trade is not a, not nearly as important as being consistent with your rules and your trading. The more consistent you are with reading the price section of the chart and applying your rules to that trade is where the money lies. It always has and it always will. Stop swinging for the fence because greed will destroy your account. I promise you that. Greed gets in the way of more people making money. It's amazing. How many in here would say, just type in a Y if you've ever done this, had a nice winning trade and turned it into a loser because you wanted more? Yeah, that's common, right? We've all done that. So what we have to do is create a rule to prevent ourselves from doing that. Okay? To be consistently profit profitable means we have to take profits consistently. Small, consistent gains moving our account forward. Okay, that's what's important. We need to every month be protecting and managing our win-loss ratio and our monthly goal. Now, I think this is extremely important and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna challenge everyone listening to do this. Figure out what your monthly goal is. Make it reasonable, make it attainable. If it's a number, if you put a number out there that you just really have never even come ever close to achieving, chances of you failing on your goal are going to be huge. Okay? So have a reasonable goal. A goal that most people would be very happy to achieve. And I want you to write it down next month. I want you to get out a piece of notebook paper and I want you to write it down what your goal is for that month. And every trade you think about trading, I want you to bounce it against that goal. Is this going to get me a two for one risk reward? Does this have the opportunity to move me forward? Okay, and then every time you make a trade, win, lose, or draw, you write that down and subtract it or add it back to where your goal is. The reason that's important, one of the reasons I'm not doing much trading right now, real ugly month right now, today was a pretty good day, but a real ugly month um, in volatility and stuff like that in the market. I made my goal, but now I'm being extremely careful to protect my goal. I know that one trade, one really bad trade, could make it so I miss my goal. I wasted that money forcing a trade or pushing, trying to push something. So I'm going to stay disciplined. I'm going to protect my goal. I'm going to protect my account. Okay, and just run that list and look at it every day. That will do several things for you. It'll, it'll keep you focused on where you need to be looking in your trades. And, and I'm going to give you guys a just a, a little warm and fuzzy story here. And it's about my friend Mike Peterson. <clears throat> Mike Peterson for the last several months has averaged three to four thousand dollars a month trading an account of about 30 grand okay three to four thousand dollars a month his biggest wins average about a hundred to a hundred and fifty dollars per trade he he commonly says in the room or makes this this comment is it easier guys to find a trade that can make you a hundred dollars or one that can make you a thousand 
and he's ruthless about taking profits. I mean, he doesn't even blink about taking a profit. He's consistently turning in small, consistent gains all the time into his account, just slowly and consistently growing his account. Now, that's a tremendous, figure that out. Take $4,000 into $30,000 and see what that rate of return is. He's killing it out there. He's doing a great job in his trading, and he's doing it with very small, consistent trading. Okay, and here's the fun thing about doing that. Once your account grows, it's easy to scale that plan, right? You just increase your trade size and take the profit. That's all you got to do. And just keep growing and moving that account forward on a consistent basis. All right, so let's take a quick look here um, at some charts. So we can talk about um, those things and, and, and putting those plans together. Now, I tell everybody uh, that basically I trade two patterns. I trade a trend up or a trend down, and I'm looking for two things to occur. I'm looking for in a downtrend, I'm looking for a rally that fails at resistance. Rally that fails at resistance to take a short. Or I'm looking for a tight consolidation. Little platform built here. Tight consolidation that fails to continue and continues the trend. That's the downtrend. Okay, two patterns. If a stock is reversing from a downtrend to an uptrend, Everyone in right way options can repeat this because I repeat it so many times a day. Wait for the downtrend to break. Wait for the stock to prove that it can hold support and shows you the beginning of a trend. And then you have a trade to move that trade higher or move that stock higher. We do that over and over and over. Over and over and over, we do that. Now, if it's an uptrend that we're looking at, take a stock like Merck. It's the same trade. Stock moves higher. I'm always looking for the pullbacks that pull back toward the trend or the consolidations that occur as we move through those trends over and over and over it's the same repeating pattern i can trade the same chart over and over and over and by the way it works on every time frame so as you guys can see i work on very few things I don't try to master everything in the market. I don't even want to master everything in the market. I've built a career out of doing two simple patterns. Two patterns that repeat themselves over and over. And I even take the lazy way. The stock already has to be proving a trend before I'm interested. I'm not going to speculate on a bottom. I'm not going to speculate on a top. I'm not going to try and guess when it's going to turn around. That's a fool's game. If you're trying to pick bottoms and tops, you will never, you will never have better than a 50-50 win-loss ratio. Because you're guessing, you're gambling. And most of the time when you gamble, guess what? The house wins. You don't win. So usually it's less than 50-50 on your win-loss ratio. So I wait for the stock, I wait for the market to tell me where it wants to go, and then I just follow it. And I repeat that over and over and over. And stocks are constantly doing that over and over and over. Does every trade work? Nope. Every trade does not work. Okay, I took a quick trade on Coca-Cola. 
told everybody about it. By the way, I, I share with everyone every trade I make. Okay? I don't hide anything. I share everything, every trade I make. Okay? I bought Coca-Cola, and I told everybody I bought it on an hourly chart. Let's go to an hourly chart. Here, I use the volatility stop on it. By the way, if you guys don't have the volatility stop, don't know anything about the volatility stop, um, let me give you a link. If you guys go over there, I've got an ebook on the volatility stop. That volatility stop is a great tool. It's going to help you with support, resistance, and trend. And not only is there an ebook, um, the ebook ebook will take you to the links on um, YouTube where there's training videos on how to use the indicator, plus how to set up the indicator in TC2000 and Thinkorswim charts. So if you've not downloaded that book, if you don't have that, go get it. It's free. It's a great indicator to help you trade. I think a lot of people from Hit and Run and Right Way Options would tell you it's been a great thing for them to have because it 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 it, it helps them see support, resistance, and trend. Okay, so here was my trade. It was close to the end of the day, and I saw Coke rallying. It failed here at this resistance. It rallied up again and then showed another failure pattern close to the end of the day. So I took a short position on Coke. Now, the, the market is volatile, and I told everybody that I was taking a small position on Coke because of the volatility of the market, a lot of uncertainty. And by the way, I just want to let you guys know that I've taken um, thousands of dollars out of Coke this year. Look at, look at how this little guy trends. The options are cheap. It's easy to trade. This one just happened to get me. I had a great short setup, and it rallied up and stopped me out right here. Okay? So I lost very little money in the trade. So I don't win every trade. But before I entered that trade, I knew where my stop loss was going to be, and I knew how much I was risking on the position before I ever entered that way, I'm not emotional about the position. I know what my risk is. I'm comfortable with the trade or I wouldn't have made it. And then I just let the trade work. The last trade I closed on Coca-Cola, by the way, was an 84% return. Okay, using options. All right. I trade the heck out of this thing. I, I just, I love trading Coke. As you can see, look how smooth it moves. It's not going to be in the news every day. It's going to make nice, smooth, consistent moves when it goes. And it's easy to make money on it. As long as you're reading the price action of the chart and following the trend. And you can see what I had here. I had my trend line. The stock had failed right here at the trend line. Pushed down, rallied up, and failed a second time here, and that's why I was trying to catch that short trade. It just didn't work out. It didn't go in my favor this time. No big deal. I took very little risk because I bought it at the right place. <laughs> Get a room. <laughs> okay. So one of the things I wanted to kind of finish up with here tonight, I, I, if you guys have some questions, I'm happy to answer some questions. I didn't want this to be a really long class tonight. I wanted it to be kind of short and concise and to the point. But one one of the things I wanted to finish up with is just, just there's hope in this. If you felt kind of hopeless in your trading, like nothing is working for you, I, I'm really going to encourage you to stop trading for just a little bit. Back up. If your account is proving to you that what you're doing is not working, then why continue to do it? Why keep repeating the same mistakes over and over? We have to be willing to change and adapt and adjust our trading to fix that problem. 
Now, I'm certainly not going to tell you that what I do is the only method out there to do it. And I'm certainly not going to tell you that you can't make money in, in lots of different methods because you can. But if you're like me, it was so hopeful to me when all of a sudden I realized I didn't have to do all that junk. I didn't have to try and chase around all of these things popping up. I just had to find some really good consistent charts and continuously follow those trades, making money. So if you develop that edge, if you work real hard to put that edge together and focus in on just some very simple things, specialize at something, you will find that your trading will improve. As long as you stop predicting and trying to fight the market and will upon the market your desire. I have learned the hard way, literally beating my head against the wall for a long, long time, trying desperately to predict the market, to predict a trade. I can tell you emphatically, I can't do it and know that neither can anyone else. There's too many factors. You can be right just enough to make you think you could do it, but you'll, ne you'll see in your account, you rarely make more than a 50-50 win-loss ratio because you're always guessing and gambling. I don't do any of that anymore. I don't even try to do that anymore when the market tells me when a stock tells me it wants to move I wait for that entry and I follow the chart and it's changed my trading life been able to support my family as a full-time trader and put two kids through college doing it okay if I can do this an old carpenter that likes to carve wood. <laughs> if I can do this, anyone can. Okay? And by the way, if you're an intraday trader, this works just as well. I told everyone this morning to take a look at Baba on a 15-minute chart right here. Now this moved up, but it, the market just died and we didn't get enough volume here to move things around. But it was a winning trade. And it was nothing more, there was no predicting to it. And I told everybody about this before it actually made this move. So it works on an intraday chart. I also made mention to everyone about the QQQ today. And I was talking about an hourly chart. Right here, you guys, uh, RWO members can reference that. Right there that I was suggesting that the NASDAQ should start moving up from here. That was on an hourly chart, winning trade. Okay, it's the same price pattern. And let me let me draw this up here for just a second. What did I say? I want a trend. So I wait for the downtrend to break. I wait for the uptrend to begin. I wait for the pullback for the low risk entry into the trade so my stop loss can be close. Winning trade. Nothing hard there. It's the same pattern. It works on a weekly chart. Everyone in and in right way options saw me on Home Depot this year take about 10 grand out of Home Depot on a weekly chart. Look at the patterns. It's the same pattern. The price action, Ken. 
the price action. Oh, because Val, I mean, you can, you can, you, if you just want to trade those indexes, you're perfectly acceptable to do. I'm not much of a day trader. I, I can day trade. I don't like day trading. I prefer to have more time to myself. That's why I became a trader for the lifestyle of a trader. And if you trade the indexes, you kind of have to take on that day trading mentality. There's so much whip and volatility in them that sometimes you just have to um, move to that day trade mentality. That's not me. I kind of prefer the old stodgy stocks. The old boring stocks that are never in the news. Like Microsoft. That's where the easy money is. Just following the trends. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. And that's just my preference. That doesn't mean it's right for you. If you prefer to just trade a very small basket of stocks on an intraday basis, like the indexes, more power to you. I mean, you certainly can make a ton of money doing that. And we've made, you know, in, in right way, we've made um, really nice money trading VXX on shorter term charts. Now this is a weekly and you can see the great trends, by the way, works just as well. There's those failures at resistance. Repeats over and over. Isn't that amazing? And if we go to a shorter term chart, let's go to a daily. Are there patterns in here we can trade? Break of the downtrend. You can see it's all marked up here. My stupid tool just changed here. The break of this downtrend rallied up, pulled back to support. Buyer stepped in here. Easy winning trade. Take it to a shorter term. Could we do something on a 15 minute or a five minute? Great short trade setup right in here. Easy short trade setup right in here. Just following the trend down. Notice that the trend, I'm not saying anything different. It's the, tr the same trend. Failing at the trend. Just letting the trend do what it wants to do. Oh, no, I don't do options only. Um, I I will trade stocks and ETFs as well. I If there's options available on the stock, I will normally choose the options over the stock itself. It, um, if, if I really like a chart and it has terrible options or something, I'll just trade the stock. Um, OM... Um, I, I covered that on both the long trades and the short trades. Let me just draw this up for you. It's, it's really, really simple. Okay. When a stock is trending up, like here, I'm going to follow that trend. When the stock is trending down, I'm going to follow that trend. So failures at resistance, either swings, that where we swing up and fail at resistance are a potential short trade or consolidations over toward that trend are a short trade. Long trades are just the opposite of that. Just follow the trend up. It's the same patterns repeating over and over in the market. I showed it here on this weekly chart. There's the downtrend. All of the failure patterns that occur at price resistance in the downtrend that provide very simple low risk entries into the trade. And by the way, that occurs on every single chart. I just showed you Microsoft.
okay? Every single chart breaks the downtrend. Whoops, doggone it. Hold on, this stupid thing changed tools on me here. Here's the downtrend, break of the downtrend, what did I say? It has to prove a trend. So it moves up, consolidates, and starts moving back up. By the way, this little green arrow is when we got right way options into the trade. We did it with long-term leap options. We made a 99% return on this trade. And then we've traded it several times since. Because notice how the pattern works. It just, it works the same way in all charts. We find the trend, the trend stays consistent. It's an old boring stock. Nobody cares. Microsoft isn't gonna be a newsy stock. It's not gonna be flipping around in the news all the time. It's an easy trader. Get into that trade and just manage the position. And you can enter trades repeatedly in this position. There's an entry here, an entry here, one here, one here, one here, 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 all the way up. Great entry on this trade right here. Just following the trend. Same chart over and over and over. Can I still do leaps with high volatility long term? Right now, I'm not trading any leaps, Val. And the reason is, is because I'm waiting for the market to kind of settle out. I want some of that volatility to spill off. And then I'll be looking for those good price patterns. There's not many good price patterns right now of stocks coming up out of a bottom yet. They're starting, but there's not many good patterns with, uh, within that yet. In fact, we did a, um, a scan today live in the room to look for that. There's very few that are actually starting to turn around and perk back up and provide those signals. But there will be. Okay, there will be. Yeah, Baba may be starting. Baba on a on a daily chart. Baba's broken that downtrend, and you can see it's starting that little uptrend process. It has a major resistance level that it's got to work through right here. And if it can if it can break this wedge pattern that's here. Okay, break through that wedge, hold its support over in here. I think there's good opportunity. Yeah, Val, you're right. And Bob is not for everyone because it is very volatile. Not for everyone. Um, one of our members um, in the room, Bob C, traded Bob in 2017. And that one stock alone, just trading in and out of that stock over the course of a year, he made 130 grand. And all he did was follow the rules that I'm talking about. He just followed the trend and just kept trading that trade in and out, in and out, in and out. One stock, 130 grand. Simple set of rules. Simple trend following. So you, I, I agree. It's it's kind of jumpy. It's kind of a hard one to trade for a lot of folks. Um, you know, if you're more of an intraday trader, though, could you look at a shorter term chart? Maybe find a good trend. Yeah, you know, even here, pretty darn jumpy. It kind of flips back and forth all over the place. It's not real consistent in its price action yet, but it certainly could turn into a consistent price action. Um, look for big patterns too. Um, anyone in right way will tell you. Um, I told everyone about the potential of Lily breaking this big resistance area before it occurred. This is a weekly chart. I looked at that chart. I told everyone about it before it occurred. I said, watch this. If this breaks, it could get a big move. Now I'm gonna to go to the daily chart and I'm gonna actually show you where my alert was. That pink line right there was my alert for the entry into the trade. 
And all it is, is looking at the chart and the patterns and following those simple patterns in the chart. It's not that hard. The hard part is setting aside, setting aside your, um, your bias to a trade and just waiting for the trade to come to you. <laughs> I knew it wasn't. I knew you didn't mean lips. <laughs> I was able to read that <laughs> or interpret it. Um, that comes down to your, David, to answer your question, it, it comes down to your risk tolerance. If you have that small account, it comes down to your risk tolerance in a trade and your confidence or your ability to trade. In a high volatility market, um, debit spreads um, can be kind of challenging and so can credit spreads be really challenging. Um, straight directional calls and puts, if you're doing good technical analysis, are not that hard to do. And by the way, Mike Peterson, that I just talked about, that's had that great success, that's all he trades. Long calls and long puts, that's all he trades. He's learning spreads, but he's not traded them. He trades long calls and long puts. So it all depends on you personally, on your tolerance and, and things like that. Um, uh, for coaching, um, Kimberly, um, what I do is we usually do about a 15, 20 minute kind of get to know you phone call. And that's where I do more listening than talking. I want to hear from you what your trading's like. I want to know um, what your results are, what, your, what you believe your biggest weakness and your biggest strength in trading are. I want to look for those places where I can really be the most helpful the soonest. And then we jump into the coaching after that on the next session um, where I really start helping folks define. Now, one of the things I run into a lot, Kimberly, is, is folks have never thought about a plan. They have no plan. So I'm usually really working hard with them to get some kind of a plan together that fits them. Okay, so that we can start building that edge in the market. They know where they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do. And, and by the way, I can tell you for most people, it's not sweeping changes that have to be made. Think about it. If you're winning 50-50, if you're winning five and losing five, okay? Unfortunately, when people do that, a lot of times they're losing five. They lost more than they gained on their winning five. So their account's going down. But overall, they're winning about half of the time on their trading. Do you realize it's little tiny adjustments that need to be make to, made to bring you into profitability? It's rarely a big sweeping change. It's little tiny tweaks. to bring you into profitability on your trading. Okay. Um, on Lily, do you wait for the break out of the high? I trade a pattern. Um, it's, um, it's called the pop out of the box pattern. Um, I've, I've done several classes on the pop out of the box. It's a really, really simple pattern. Um, anyone can can learn to trade it. The pop out of out of the box shows up in 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 trends all the time, and all it really is is the stock is consolidating. So if I were to draw a a little box around this pattern right here, you can see that we have a really tight area here. Okay, a very small percentage area where there's no buyers above this area and no sellers. So because the stock is currently in a trend, I'm going to be favoring this for an upside move because the trend says it's up. Okay, all the, all the consolidation is doing is building energy to move. 
Okay, so typically when it pops out of the top of the box, if I like the market condition, I'm long when it pops out of the top of the box. I will have my alert, my orders ready. Here's another little pop out of the box pattern right here. There's another one right here. You can see the one in here. Repeats itself over and over and over. And the reason I can do that on those consolidations like that, um, GJ, is because I know there's no sellers underneath here. If there's no sellers underneath here, and all of a sudden the buyers pop it through the top up here, my stop loss can be right underneath the box here. It's a very tight entry into the trade. I take very little risk on the position because price action is telling me where that stock is likely going to go. I just wait for it to happen. I don't, I don't try to predict that it's going to happen. I wait for it to happen. And that's why when you look at my charts, you see these little pink lines all over the place. Those are price alerts. <clears throat> I set alerts on my chart and I literally make the trade come to me. Uh, Bob H, um, stop has to go below the box. That's where support is. That's where, you know, the price is proved. There's no sellers here. Okay, so that's where support is. If you enter that trade here, your stop loss goes right underneath here. Until that moves on through and then you adjust that stop up accordingly. But that's one of the reasons I love the pop out of the box pattern because it's such a tight, low risk entry. Then they, they literally just happen all the time in the market. They're constantly happening, in trend, particularly in trending stocks. Look for, look for good, long, consistent ones somewhere around big resistance areas or just above support levels. Okay, that's where they tend to show up really clearly. And they're pretty easy to trade. All right. And I do have a class available for that if you guys are are interested in that hey by the way guys i'm going to mention this and you can do whatever you want uh, with this I, i'm i'm showing you tc2000 and one of the things that is going to improve your competitive edge in the market is to have a really good set of charts a lot of people rely just on what their brokers provide and honestly I, i've been a thinkorswim user for i don't know forever but I rarely use their charts. They have good charts, but they have terrible scanning ability. They, they're terrible in watch list management. Okay. And um, I, I got to tell you, and I think a lot of people from hit and run and right way options would, would tell you that TC2000, um, they credit TC2000 for helping their trading out a lot because the, the, the charts are just so clean and clear and easy to use and easy to find what you want in a trade. Let me give you just a quick example that you just can't do in most, most other platforms. If I go to the diamonds and I want to find out every stock that's in the diamonds, I click one button and I have a list of everything that's in the diamonds that I can now sort or walk through. I'm telling you, TC2000 gets me to the trades faster and more efficiently. Okay. So if anyone here is interested in that, I'm going to give you a link because I've been teaching classes on TC2000 and they gave me a link. You guys can save 25 bucks um, if you buy it. If you're not interested, no problem. Don't worry about it. But um, if you can... <laughs> hey, if you can save 25 bucks and get a good set of tools, um, you're welcome to it. 
By the way, I do have classes also. I do have classes on, on the channel. No, it is not free, Val. It is not free. It's going to cost you, with that coupon, if you buy, if you buy the gold package, it's going to cost you $274 for an entire year of charts. One trade. One small trade buys your charts for a year. So it's just like that example that I gave when Mike says, you know, people will buy a $2,500 set of golf clubs and not spend $100 on how to use them. It's kind of the same thing here. If you're going to trade and be effective, you need a good set of tools. I don't care if it's TC2000, but I can tell you it, it works really well for me. And if you're looking for a good set of charts, it's a great piece of software that just plain works. And they're doing a big upgrade here soon where the full version will be available even on your phone and on an iPad. You can carry your charts wherever you go. The gold is what I would recommend for most. Um, the gold is, with that coupon that I posted there, it's 274 bucks for a whole year. TradeStation is a good platform. Um, one of the things that I, I hear from people about TradeStation is that they kind of nickel and dime you on different things. But it's a good platform, it's good quality data. Um, I can't tell you, I can't tell you how easy it is to um, uh, to do the things I just showed you there with a watch list. Okay, so take a look at that. So, hey everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic. Did everyone get the link for that ebook? If you guys want the ebook on the volatility stop. Seriously, if you've never seen that, I know that will help you in your trading if you learn how to use the volatility stop. It it, it doesn't it's not a it's not a buy sell indicator. Okay? There's no indicator that I consider to be a buy sell indicator. Okay? But what it is what it is is a good um um, indicator of support, resistance, and trend. And if we can ha have something that helps us identify support, resistance, and trend, it gives us a little bit of an edge in the market. So if you're struggling with support, resistance, and trend, that may be a great tool for you to take a look at. And those videos are free and the ebook's free. All, you know, uh, no sales here tonight. Okay. So do me a favor. I'm going to give you this link one more time. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go over there. I don't make any money on the YouTube channel. It's just simply to provide as much quality information as I can to those who are looking for some help in their trading. So take a look at that. Thank you very much, guys, for being here today. I do appreciate it. By the way, I will get this rendered and uploaded to YouTube. It will probably be available sometime tomorrow if you want to um, rewatch it or share it with other folks. Um, it will be up there for everyone to see. Thank you guys very much for being here tonight. I truly, truly appreciate it. I want to wish you all the very, very best. If you're struggling in your trading, don't give up. Keep working at it. Refine your trading. Come back to it with a different attitude. But don't give up because trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it to work through those issues and problems and actually get to that professional trading level or that profitable trading level where you can do this for a living. It's, it's fantastic freedom. So never give up on that dream, all right? If we can be of help, just let us know. We'd love to help you out. Everyone take care. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome evening. We'll talk to you all very soon. Take care now.